Chapter 11 Living as a riser phoenix isn't bad at all. Riser sat on the edge of his bed and then took a cigar from his desk. He put it in his mouth, and it lit up automatically without him doing anything. He sucked the nicotine and felt comfortable somehow. He then stood up from his bed and walked to the corner, watching absentmindedly the scenery from the window. He expected Phoenix's stamina to be good, but he didn't expect it to be this good. He wasn't sure how long, but he was sure that he spent his time with his harem for a day and a night without even taking a break. Since yesterday, they had never walked out and spent their time in his room eating, taking a bath, and other things, but mostly they had S-asterisk X. Still, while he was okay, all of them were sleeping, exhausted since the pleasure given by him was too much. His S-asterisk X mastery was too much to handle, and they were nothing but a bitch on his hands. He knew that from now on, all of them wouldn't be able to live without him. Still, the real ability of S asterisk X mastery wasn't just to make him good at having S asterisk X but also to make it easier for him to conceive children. If he wanted to, he could make all of his peerage members get pregnant. Usually, this would be hard as a devil would have difficulty conceiving a child, but that didn't seem to be the case with him due to his S asterisk X mastery. However, enough of this since he felt refreshed at that moment. He felt like he had been reborn. As expected, the feeling of stealing the women of others was good. He pinched the bridge of his nose and thought that he shouldn't do this, yet the feeling was better than he had thought. Moreover, as a devil, wasn't it normal for him to do a bad thing? Somehow, he felt that being a devil wasn't a bad thing. Longevity, a powerful body, a wealthy family, a harem, and various other things. When he thought about his current life, everything was good except for the system, which often forced him to do something inexplicable. Still, the announcement from the system made him stop thinking. You have done a good job. Please be eviler from now on. Congratulations, your demonic power will increase by nine times. Unfortunately, you are unable to sleep with all of your peerage members, so you will only receive three random rewards instead of five random rewards. His lips twitched as he felt speechless by the system. The last member of his peerage? Wasn't that his little sister? What did the system try to imply? He rubbed his temple and thought that this system was really evil. Yet, he had to say the reward was good, especially when his demonic power had increased nine times. Demonic power is like a magic power in video games, manga, or anime. The more, the better. Or rather, it was the easiest way to tell whether a devil was strong or not since the more demonic power they had, the stronger they were. The reason why Serzek was hailed as the strongest devil was because of the amount of demonic power on his body instead of the power of destruction. The power of destruction originally came from the Bale family, the highest ranking house amongst the 72 pillars of the devil and held the rank of great king. Yet, none of the devils from the Bale family were able to reach Serzek since their amount of demonic power was only SOSO. Moreover, when one's demonic power was so low, one would also become a subject of discrimination like Serorg Bale the original heir of the Bale family. If he remembered well, because of Serorg's demonic power, his position as an heir was taken, and he was also thrown out of the household. Moreover, his father also looked at him in disdain and never thought of him as his child. From this point, it was easy to tell how important demonic power is, right? Meanwhile, the demonic power of Riser originally wasn't bad. It might not be comparable to Mal, but it was good enough for him to be called a genius. However, when he got this reward, he believed that his position should be enough to reach the top 50 among the strongest or a little more. It might be hard to guess exactly how strong he was compared to others since his stay in this world was only for a while, and while he had the memory of his previous lives. It didn't mean he knew everything since he only watched the anime instead of reading the novel. Moreover, Riser was only a villain that was beaten in the beginning. His role was only for Sekar Udi to show his awesomeness and to get Rias' heart. Even the origin of his peerage members also wasn't explained, but unlike the Rius, the way he treated his peerage members was a little bad as he saw them as nothing but his servants and whole for pleasure. However, he was much better than the majority of the devils who treated their servants as tools that could be discarded any time. He looked at all the women on his bed and thought that as he had become a riser phoenix, he needed to treat them better in the future. Still, he had more rewards. However, unlike before, it was a random reward that confused him. Yet, maybe because he had done many crazy things the moment he arrived in this world, he didn't show much fear and just opened his rewards. Like a slot machine, an almost infinite number of lists of various things kept turning until it stopped showing the three rewards he received. Congratulations, you have received Bajiquant Mastery, 
claymore techniques, and magic spear, Ten Commandments. When he saw all of those rewards, he wondered what it would be like if he slept with all members of his peerage. However, he quickly shook his head and definitely wouldn't do something like that. Still, his rewards were as impressive as ever. Bajiquin? It was an excellent martial art, and it seemed suitable for his peerage members. Claymore techniques? It seemed that it was a sword technique from a certain work that he read in the past. Still, this technique was different from the techniques of the East, and it was more suitable for his peerage members, especially his two knights who wielded a giant sword instead of a katana-like weapon. Lastly, he looked at the magic spear in his hand and couldn't help but suck a deep breath since he could tell how powerful it was. It had the ability to manifest into its ten forms, each with different and unique powers and techniques. It was also nearly indestructible due to the dense material used to forge it, and it was harder than any diamond in the world. Moreover, with his Bajiquan mastery, this spear was like an extension of his hand since Bajiquan also had a spear technique, so he tried it, wielding it like Li Shu Wen, the master of Bajiquan, did. Riser Sama. He stopped and realized Mira had woken up. She was his pawn and the weakest among his peerage members, but she was cute, and her hairstyle was unique. Still, now, he was naked, and he almost couldn't look away. Still, her eyes were wide open, especially when she saw him skillfully play with the spear in his hands like he had trained with a spear for his life. But what was that spear? She felt that it was so powerful, but she was also so sleepy, wondering whether it was a dream. Sleep first. I will make you stronger when you wake up. He put down the spear and caressed her gently. She nodded, kissing his lips before she continued to sleep holding his hand with a smile since he was so gentle now. Looking at her, he thought living as Riser wasn't bad at all. By the way, Riser-sama. Mira suddenly opened her eyes slightly. What's wrong? Do you need me to help you with that? I can't help you with my body since I am a little tired, but I can help you with my hands and mouth. Mira offered. Riser blinked his eyes and thought Mira was such a gentle and kind girl. Then, please do. Yes. As a staff user, Mira handled his rod well. While enjoying Myra's help, he thought that he should enjoy his life since he believed he needed to be rewarded for his hard work. 15,000 words have passed, so there is no need for him to use inhuman writing techniques to update more chapters. So I wonder, how many chapters should I update for this novel? By the way, there is one more chapter later. Chapter 12, I Wish to Change. You guys, how can you be so lazy? Ravel couldn't help but scold and looked at all of Riser's members' peerage dissatisfiedly since they woke up so late. While the underworld lacked the concept of a morning and a night, similar to a human, they woke up at a similar time to a morning on Earth and slept at a similar time to a night on Earth. Moreover, the concept of morning and night became more distinct, with many reincarnated devils who were previously human. Similarly, all Riser's peerage members woke up late in the afternoon like how people on Earth spent their holiday lazily. Yet, being scolded by Ravel, they couldn't say anything and could only lower their heads. Oni Aisama has woken up so early. But you guys are still sleeping like a pig. Is this how you act as his servants? We're sorry. What could they say? They could only apologize. Yet, they knew that they were also at fault since last night. Last night was just so fantastic. While they were scolded, their eyes kept glancing at Riser, who was reading a book while eating a sandwich with one hand with longing and flush. It might not be their first time having S asterisk X with him, yet last night was different. While his stamina was as good as ever, his technique was so much different. It was so otherworldly. It was something that they had never expected from him since, while he was a genius, a lack of experience, the unwillingness to learn, and blind confidence was something inevitable. Yet, that last night was different since the pleasure they felt was just too paramount. They felt their brains melt, their bodies became boneless and they became mindless animals that only sought after him. Even now, their bodies were tingling, and the sensation from last night was impossible to erase. His every being was engraved and even marked deep into their souls. Probably, they might not be able to escape from him, but they didn't really mind since they didn't want it either. Ravel, that's enough. You shouldn't blame them too much. But Oni Aisama. Ravel was aggrieved since she only wanted to teach Riser's peerage members not to forget about their identity as his servants. Yet why did she feel like she was the bad guy? I know that you want the best for me, but they helped me with something last night. I am sure something like this won't happen again next time, right? Yes. All of them answered at the same time since the better Ravel's mood recovered, the better for them. While being patted by Riser, Ravel felt better, but inwardly, she rolled her eyes. 
helping? Well, they helped him, but somehow she felt a certain resentment and jealousy toward all of them somehow. However, she could think about that later since she had to say it felt great when she was patted by her older brother. Was it his imagination, but his little sister's eyes seemed a little strange? He decided to erase this strange thought since this should be normal since the relationship between the original riser and Ravel wasn't bad. Come on, hurry up and eat. There is something that I want to say to all of you later. Yes, they hurriedly ate since they were so hungry at that moment. Still, even if they were hungry, they still maintained a certain etiquette, but they had to say they anticipated what he would tell them later. Was he going to do it again? Ah, once again, their bodies were tingling with lust. Ravel frowned and moved even closer to Riser. Riser. When everyone had finished their food, he brought all of them to his study room. While they felt slightly disappointed since he didn't intend to do anything, they didn't change their expression and waited for him to talk. Okay, I am sure that you are curious about what I am going to say, but I want to tell you that I plan to teach you magic. Magic. I am sure that you have seen my last battle with Sekar UDI. What do you think? What did they think? It was awesome. While Riser was powerful and even known as a genius, they never expected him to be so strong. Riser sama your blue fire is cool. Yes, it is so hot that it can burn anything. I like that mirage better. Many had various thoughts about his fight with Sekar Udi. However, while many were amazed by his blue flame, his ability to create many clones to fool the Sekar Udi was something they liked the most. It's good that you like it, so I will do my best to teach you. Eh? All of them were dumbfounded and tongue-tied, unable to say a single word. What? You don't want to? We want to. They hurriedly said. But is that okay, Oniai-sama? Yes, Riser-sama. Is it okay for you to teach us? Frankly, after that battle, many of the members of the Phoenix House and the other devils knew that the best fire users in this world were him, and they all wished him to teach them. But they refrained from doing so since they knew it was impossible for him to teach them since magic was a secretive thing like an heirloom that could only be taught for his family. Why not? You are all members of my peerage. I have thought of you as my family, so isn't it natural for me to wish for you to become stronger? And I want to change how we fight from now on. While an injury or sacrificing some people in the raiding game might be inevitable, I don't want that to happen to us. You all have to care for each other, and when you can help others, then do it. Riser could see the surprised expression on their faces, but how could they be blamed? The difference between him and the original Riser was too huge. The original Riser was like any high-class pure blood devil, and he was looking down on anyone, including his peerage members, who were reincarnated devils. In his eyes, they were his bitch, though he treated them better than the majority since they were also his women. However, he was different since he thought of them as his family now. As he had become Riser, he knew that instead of his real family, the one that was closest to him was his peerage members since they couldn't betray him. Everyone could see that he had changed, and this change wasn't bad at all. There will be a lot of changes from now on, including how I will act with all of you. It might be strange at first, but I wish to change, so will you follow me? Yes, Riser sama They were all in sync, and there was no doubt in their voices. Even if he was going to go to heaven, they were going to follow him without hesitation. Still, if you like humiliation play, I can do it too. But wait until tonight. Okay. Isabella? Riser Sama. His rook, a voluptuous woman with short, light brown hair, gray eyes, and a plain white mask that covered part of the right side of her face, blushed and raised her voice. They all chuckled, and some looked at her with a perverted smile. Still, a minority of them were glad that he hadn't changed since, like Isabella, they also liked being humiliated by him. Riser. Nevertheless. Oniai Sama. What is humiliation play? Ravel asked. Everyone, there is still a lot of time, and I will teach you two magics. I want all of you to master these two magics before anything else. Yes. All of them followed him and ignored Ravel's question. Only Ravel puffed her cheeks and showed her annoyance by lightly hitting his chest since she felt she was being left out. Yet, he was also helpless since how could he even explain the answer? Nevertheless, his peerage members were going to change from now on. Chapter 13 Even if I want to live a debauchery life, the situation won't let me. Inside his castle, he set up a spacious training facility where he and his peerage members could train without any reservation. How did he build this? It was with the power of money. Yes, money. It was as simple as that. The only thing that the Phoenix family didn't lack was money, especially when their family was the only producer of the Phoenix Tears, a panacea that could almost heal anything. Naturally, for such a thing, 
the price was high. Frankly, even if he did nothing and became a scumbag, who spent his life in debauchery, he definitely wouldn't be troubled in life. Especially when his first and second brothers could be relied on. Still, he divorced Rius and caused her to be in such humiliation. While everything was caused by Rius and her family, the devil's personality was something that couldn't be predicted. They might not say anything since it was in public, and once everyone saw they had targeted the Phoenix family, the trouble wasn't going to be worth it. Yet, once again, Rius's older brother was Serzek Gremory, Mal Lucifer. When Serzek said he was number two, no one dared to claim he was number one. Moreover, Serzek had a lot of comradeship with three other mouse, and his wife was also powerful. As long as Rius and her family were given a chance, it wouldn't be weird if he was targeted. In case a war happened in the future, he was afraid that he might be put as a vanguard and fight against the enemies on the front line and then die. Once again, his parents had three sons. Even if he died, they wouldn't do anything to Serzek and others since they were powerful. In front of mighty power, everything was meaningless. His family and parents might hold a grudge, but they might forget him since their power wasn't enough. The reason why God could be revered and become the controller of this world was because God was powerful. If there was a reason why Serzek didn't do anything to him back then, it was because he wasn't powerful enough to ignore all the consequences that might happen once he touched him. Once Serzek did something, he would become the enemy of the majority of the devils since his action was selfish. Moreover, no one liked tyrants. Lastly, Serzek was a peace-loving individual. As someone who had seen war and becomes part of it, Serzek knew that attacking him with an impulse would lead to such a war. Nevertheless, even with all of that, an emotion was irrational. It was impossible to tell what one thought even if they smiled toward you yesterday. Moreover, they were all devils, a race that was moved by emotion instead of logic. Wasn't the seven sins something born from their race? Riser knew that it might be better for him to prepare since no one could tell what would happen in the future, right? In conclusion, he had to become powerful. While his system was quite strange and forced him to do something inexplicable, he knew it could make him powerful, so he didn't hate it. The only problem was the consequences and the choices of actions he was told to make since they were too outrageous. However, the system didn't show its presence after telling him to sleep with all of his peerage members, and his power wasn't enough to fight against Serzek, so while it might sound dirty, he thought that the quest of the system that told him to have an engagement wasn't bad at all. So among all the female devils that could be his engagement target, his choice was Sona Citri. Her beauty, mind, and personality aside, her older sister was also the real reason why he chose her. Yes, similar to Rius, Sona's older sister was also Mal. Even if he didn't ask Sona's older sister to fight Serzek, he hoped that she could help him to ease his relationship with Serzek. The two were friends, so he could also have protection from Sona's older sister. As for Sekaryudii, Rius, and the Grimry family? He only snorted since he didn't even see them as opponents. Still, he sighed and hoped that Serzek didn't exist. Oniai-sama? What's wrong? Ravel looked up with an upturned gaze curiously, pressing her chest onto his right arm, showing the looming of her well-developed breasts in his direction. Riser, Such an innocent and cute girl can only be eaten by you. With your status as her older brother, she won't realize you feel lust toward her. Ask her to come to your room with an excuse to teach her. Then... When there are only the two of you inside the room, you can teach her how to become an adult. Riser thought that was expected of a system that forced him to be a villain. This system was as abominable as ever. Yet, he wanted to correct one thing since he felt it might cause a misunderstanding if he didn't explain. He didn't feel us toward Ravel. This is what he wanted to correct. Nothing. It was impossible to do anything to Ravel. He might as well do something for Serzek's mother and wife since it was more ethical and healthier instead of going after his little sister, even if he wasn't the original riser. Right? Listen to me. I will teach you three magics. I hope that you can master them. Unless all of you master this magic, then I won't go to the next stage. So I hope that you can learn this magic with a serious attitude, or rather if you don't want me to punish you, then you should master all of them. They nodded, but in I, the red-haired Nicomeda, raised her hand and asked, if we can't master it, what is the punishment, Riser sama Yeah? I will keep you here, and you can't come out until you master the three magics that I will teach you. Hearing that answer, they thought that they had to study with all of their might. Naturally, the first one who learns these three magics will get a reward from me. Reward, Nya? Lee, the blue-haired Nakomata, who was also the twin of Lee, was curious and also excited. Yes. Riser nodded. The reward is that you can ask me anything as long as it is within my power. 
Really? Can we ask anything? As long as it is within my power? Okay. If you ask me to give you a country and the world, then I can only say sorry that I can't give you that. Um, they weren't going to ask that. But when they thought about last night, they had made up their minds what they were going to ask him. Fu fu fu. Ha ha. All of them were suspicious and had lewd smiles on their faces. Naturally, all of them were seen by Ravel, and she frowned, yet she couldn't do anything. The only thing she could do was to master the magic that was going to be taught by Riser first before anyone else. Since Ravel also wanted a reward from her older brother, Riser wasn't sure, but it seemed he had lit up the fire on their spirits. Well, it was good, right? Okay, let's start now. I will do my best to teach you. So I hope that you can learn these three magics well, okay? Yes. All of them answered at the same time and vowed that they were going to be the first who learned three magics from Riser. His peerage members need to become strong. Chapter 14. Best Reward. The three magic that he wanted them to learn were, without a doubt, fire magic. All of them were also his servants, and as his servants, without a doubt, their best magic was either fire magic or wind magic. As he received fire manipulation mastery, he could teach everything that was related to fire. Whether it was Phoenix ability, ordinary fire magic, fire-related Norse magic, Esper fire-related ability, or any other abilities and skills, as long as it was related to fire, he knew all of them. When he claimed he was number two in fire manipulation, no one dared to claim they were number one. While the three magics he wanted them to learn were the same fire magic, each had a different effect. The first one was fire magic, which was related to a movement. By using fire magic, one's speed would increase dramatically enough to seemingly cause one's body to disappear. This magic was simple, and all of them could learn it easily, but it wasn't easy to master it as a movement wasn't just simply charging forward like a boar. The change of direction, obstacles, and various other things. One needs to think about all of that before one can master this fire movement magic. However, this was good enough for them to run away. If they wanted to run away, no one should be able to stop them. Naturally, it was only among their levels and slightly above them, but in cases like the big boss like Serzak, they died. Though, this single magic was enough to excite all of them. Still, this was too early for them to feel excited. The second magic that he wanted to teach them was a heat sight. Similar to the first magic, it also supported magic, but it was for eyesight. While there wasn't much effect, it helped them to see people through their body's heat. Even if there was an obstacle that made them unable to see their targets, their targets were hiding, or had the ability to hide their presence, they could see them with this heat sight. Now, the last one is still similar. It was still supplementary magic. However, unlike before, when he taught them the last magic, their excitement was even better. Now, see my body. Suddenly, his body disappeared, and no one could see his figure. Then when he appeared again, he smiled and said, Now, this is the last magic you are going to learn. You must learn it, okay? Yes. This time, everyone answered with an even louder voice. By using fire magic to turn invisible, he hid his figure by refracting light from the heat, turning invisible. Still, if it was learned even further, it could create a mirage. It was like what he had done before, creating a lot of copies during his previous fight, causing Issei Hayadu to be unable to find his figures. Among all the three magics that he taught them, Without a doubt, the last one was their favorite, so they learned it well with all of their might. Moreover, as a devil, who didn't want to become stronger. Lastly, their master was gentle and supportive, yet also rough. All of them loved him deeply now. Frankly, a master like him, Rius, or even Sona was rare among the devils. The majority of the devils treat their servants like slaves. Evil, wicked, brutal, rotten, scum, wrong, brute, and vicious. He was sure that most of the devils had at least one of the traits he mentioned above. But Riser sama is it really all right for us to learn these magics? Aren't they important? Also, while I don't think anyone will spread your magic somewhere since I will kill anyone who does so, don't you feel worried about this? Yubaluna, his queen, a mature woman with long, wavy purple hair, took the initiative to say so. Hearing those words, they also realized how serious this situation was and waited for his answer. Still, as Yubaluna said, if someone dared to betray Riser, then they would kill them. There was no mercy. While in the human world, a human might go to prison when they commit a crime, the reincarnated devil doesn't have such a luxury. Once they had betrayed their master, death was their only destination. It's okay. I believe in all of you. Still, hearing such a question, Riser was nonchalant since he trusted all of them. Still, if my answer might not satisfy you, 
then the real reason why I am okay with it is that I am strong. With my strength, even if all of you or other people learn those three magic, I don't think someone can defeat me. Though, I would appreciate it if you don't teach this knowledge without my permission since if you do so, you will lose my trust. Yes. All of them answered at the same time and thought that he was handsome, strong. As they had been by his side all the time, they understood he was powerful, especially in his last fight with Sekar Udi. He showed all of them his real might. Yet, they also knew that he was correct. Even if someone learned the three magics taught by Riser, it didn't mean that they could defeat him. It might sound arrogant, but for someone who learned from him, he had thought of them as his opponent, especially when it came to fire manipulation. However, the most important point, they didn't want to lose his trust, so they had to keep everything in their hearts. Okay, how about we start now? The faster you learn, the faster you leave this place. Yes. What he wanted them was to learn only the basics, so it shouldn't take much time. As for mastering those three magics, they would take quite a while to do it. Nevertheless, all of them competed with each other since, as he told them before, the first one would receive the reward. Yet, when it came to magic, Yubaluna had more advantage over others as she was his queen, and her talent for magic was better than others. Riser also wasn't surprised by this since he knew the talent of his queen well. Frankly, he wondered how this woman could fall on the original Riser, but it didn't matter since she was his now. Frankly, the power of his peerage members wasn't bad at all, or rather, they were better than Sona Citri, who often appeared in the story than the original Riser. As for Rias, the world seemed to love her, and her luck was so great that she could get her hands on various powerful beings such as Sekar Udi, the daughter of the general of a fallen angel, a knight with unique sacred gear, a powerful healer, a powerful damper with sacred gear, a rare monster race Nekomata, and also a powerful female Valkyrie. Moreover, her older brother was Mao, with many powerful peerage members. While Rius might be a devil, he felt that this young woman was the daughter of heaven. Well, in her case, should she be called the daughter of the underworld? However, their relationship was far from good now, and the best way for him currently was to avoid her, living away from the plot, so he wouldn't be involved in various troubles unless his strength was strong enough to fight fate. Still, as he taught all of them carefully, the one who learned the three magics first wasn't Yubaluna, but his little sister, Ravel. Oni Aisama, I have learned all of them. Ravel was happy. Good job, Ravel. He gently stroked Ravel's golden hair with a soft smile, causing her to close her eyes in enjoyment since his patting felt so pleasant and comfortable. Because of this, she wanted to move closer, pressing her body against his, yet she endured it since she was in front of everyone. While the rest were disappointed, they accepted it and felt it was normal for Ravel to master those three magic first, considering Ravel was part of the Phoenix house. Moreover, even if they felt disappointed, what could they do? Ravel was, after all, Riser's little sister. Then, Oni Aisama, since I am the first one who learned those magics, I can get a reward from you, right? Showing her mischievous smile, Ravel asked him that question. Reward? Good, you will give Ravel a reward. But before that, you bring her to your room without anyone knowing and lock the door, then open your pants, giving her the best reward that she will think of in her life. Riser decided not to read the system reminder anymore for now. So, is there something that you want, Ravel? Um. Ravel was a bit nervous, and her face flushed red. Riser fell in silence and shook his inner doubt, thinking that it should be a normal reaction? Or did his little sister catch a cold? Then, he might as well check her condition, but it. C.A. Can we go out together? Cough. Still, I have to say that Riser's servants aren't that strong. But isn't it normal? Not everyone is like Rius, whose luck is against the sky. However, they should have potential. After all, even Sona's servants, except for Saji and Tsubaki Shinra, that don't have much potential, can become strong. So why shouldn't Riser's servants can't do so? Chapter 15. Rius is unlucky. Unlike the Phoenix House, which was filled with dumbfounded, unique, yet happy moods, such moods were hardly present in the Grimry house. The angriest one was, without a doubt, Rius's parents since this divorcement was a shame for their family. What nobles like them needed the most? Face. Reputation. Honor. All of them were necessary, yet this divorce was like throwing mud into their faces. However, the problem was that Riser wasn't the problem here, or rather, no one had ever thought that he was the problem. Rius was a beautiful woman, and she was full of talent. Moreover, she was also the heir of the Grimley house. Anyone who married her, without a doubt, would gain happiness for their entire generation. 
With such a perfect woman, even if she was a bit selfish, no one cared much. Because of this, Riser's action that had decided to divorce Rias was something unthinkable, or rather, no one had ever thought of it. Frankly, this marriage was a good marriage. The marriage between the Phoenix House and the Grimry House, the combination of the two families, would create a great alliance between the two families. The combination of the richest house in the underworld and the house that gave birth to Mal. Even the house of the great king, the Bale House, would be polite in front of them. Yet, such a future no longer existed. Everything was because of Rias. Even if her parents had always pampered her, they would no longer do that now. You should learn that as an heir of this house, there is something that you must do. Don't be willful all the time. You are no longer a child. However, Rias was Rias. She had never thought that this was her problem. But Otusama, Okasama, I don't want to marry him. Yes, from the beginning to the end, she never wanted this marriage. The marriage she envisioned was something pure, born not from an arrangement, but from a romantic fate of two people. However, for her, who was born as an heir of the Grimry house, she had never understood that such a thing was impossible. Still, even if she didn't want to, she also understood she brought shame to her family. Not only did she try to challenge her family's arrangement, and she even lost two chances that were given by her family, her arrogant fiancé was fed up with her and divorced her without mercy. Yet, she had never thought of this as her problem. Instead, it was all because of Riser. If that guy didn't divorce her, then. I am saying that you shouldn't bring shame to this family. It was the first time for their family to be insulted like this. As devils, and, more importantly, a noble, there was no way they could be happy with such a humiliation. Rias was unable to say a single word. All of her peerage members were also present, but no one could talk in front of the majesty of her parents. In the end, they were just servants. Even worse, a slave. Their status was low. Even if the Grimmery House was known for loving their peerage members, it didn't mean they had a right to be involved in this conversation. Yet, Issei Hayata didn't understand that and didn't want to understand it. Moreover, his low-capacity brain, which was only filled with lewd thoughts, had never been able to understand such a complicated conversation. The only thing that he knew was that Bucho's parents were angry because of the engagement between Bucho and Riser. Issei wanted to say that Bucho shouldn't be forced to marry someone that she didn't want to, but Kiba quickly stopped him. Kiba. Kiba shook his head. This isn't a place for us to talk. But are you okay with this? What can we do? Yes. What could they do? Kiba could only show a wry smile since everything was also their fault. It was their fault for being weak. Issei clenched his fist, feeling frustrated and that feeling accumulated inside his heart. Moreover, you know, I have been thinking about erasing your status as an heir of the Grimry House. What? Those words. Rias never thought she would hear it from her parents. We are fortunate to have Millicass. That's true. We might as well make Millicass the next heir now. Millicass Grimry. He was the child of Sirzek Grimry and Grafia Lucifuge. Unlike his father, who couldn't be the heir of his family because of his status as Mao, he was the next heir after Rius. Rius's parents thought that they might as well make their grandson the next heir since Rius was like this. With such a whimsical and selfish heir, they couldn't feel relieved to have her as the next heir of this house. Moreover, they also needed to satisfy the thought of the other members of the Grimry house. After all, no one wished to have a divorced woman as their head. If Rius showed some kind of power or genius in a certain area, there might be room for an arrangement. Yet, Rius was neither. If there was something that she was better than others, then it was her breasts. That's it. Her value in the eyes of other devils was so cheap that they scoffed at her. Frankly, this way of thinking might be extremely rude and also barbaric since Rias was an individual and her wish should be respected. However, as someone who was born with a golden spoon and had everything from birth, she should also pay a certain price for it, and that price was her wish wasn't the number one. Instead, everything was for their family. The family's interest was number one. Yet, Rias didn't understand that. While Rias' father, Zioticus Grimmery, was the head of the family, it didn't mean he could be a tyrant and do everything based on his selfishness. It's our fault for pampering you so much. Yes, if we educate you more. Zioticus and Rias' mother, Venelana Grimmery, sighed helplessly since everything was too late. Hearing that, Rias' eyes became moist with tears, and she was unable to say anything since she knew that her parents were completely disappointed in her. Wait a moment. Issei was unable to hold on any longer. Issei. Issei Cohen. The others wanted to stop him, but Issei couldn't stop. Why was everything Bucho's fault? 
she shouldn't be blamed for chasing her own happiness, right? Also, isn't it normal for one to hate being married to such a playboy? Bucho isn't at fault. While he wanted to continue, everyone pushed him down and closed his mouth with all of their might. He tried to fight and wanted to say more, but unexpectedly, no one said anything. He was ignored. Zioticus and Venelana completely ignored Issei. Rias didn't even say anything to Issei. She might have been moved by Issei's words before, but everything changed when Issei lost that battle. Fortunately, Issei didn't see that since he was being pushed down by others. Yet, the reaction of Rias's parents was normal. Frankly, even if Riser was a playboy, they didn't care. Even if he had a lot of women, they also didn't think too much. Moreover, in the beginning, they could see that Riser had a good opinion of Rias. Even though he might be a playboy and had a lot of women, his legal wife was Rias. Yet, the most important thing, he was powerful. Power is everything in the world of the supernatural. For Riser, who could create a blue fire, had a frightening master over flame manipulation ability, and the power to defeat the Seker UDI easily, his value was much bigger than this lewd Seker UDI. As a powerful devil, Riser's children would also be powerful. Moreover, Riser was a pure-blooded devil. With such a status, everyone would beg to marry him. Yet, their stupid daughter ruined everything. Chapter 16. Every girl needs to marry. Father. Mother. Let's forget it since everything has happened. Serzek. 2x. Zioticus and Venelana sighed, but they knew that Serzek was correct. Even if they wanted to blame Rius, they knew that they were also at fault. Serzek also couldn't escape the blame since he was the one who set up everything and also became Rius's backer. More importantly, their greatest mistake was underestimating Riser Phoenix and overestimating Hayato Issei. Riser wasn't just an ordinary genius. He was a monster. Among his age, he was the best of his generation. Whether Zioticus, Venelana, or Serzek knew this, and they knew that the last battle probably wasn't Riser's limit. Riser was also young, so he could be even more powerful. His limit was probably even further. The worst Riser's limit would be at Seraphal Leviathan's level, who was the strongest female devil. However, if they had to be optimistic, he might be the third irrationality that happened among the devil. He might become the third existence at the same level as Ajuka Beelzebub and Serzak Gremory. Nevertheless, such an existence was already out of their reach already. This regretted them the most. Whether Zioticus, Venelana, or Serzak thought similarly. They might love Rias, but there was something that was more important, the future of the devil and the interest held by Serzak and all the people that entered his boat. The four male might be powerful, but were they the rulers of the underworld? No. Other houses aside, since they didn't have the power to compete with the four Mao, the Bale House was different since it was the great king of the devils. In their minds, they were the real leader of the underworld. While the devils might be peaceful now, the fight for authority between the two groups never stopped. The reason why Rius's name was being blatantly smeared among the high-class devils was, without a doubt, the Bale family. By doing this, a great rift would be created between the Grimry House and the Phoenix House. Even worse, the Phoenix House would move away from the Four Mao and go to follow the Bale's clique. The importance of the Phoenix House was clear to all since they could produce Phoenix Tears, a special type of healing potion that could treat most injuries. Naturally, it would be horrible if everything went according to the House of Bale. Because of this, whether it was the Grimry House or Serzak, neither could blame Riser, and they couldn't make the Phoenix House their enemies. Fortunately, no one tore each other's faces, and they appeared amiable in front. Though, inside, no one could tell, which was why Riser needed to become stronger. Once again, they might love Rias, but her happiness was nothing in front of the peace of all the devils. Devils had faced many wars, and because of this, many of them had gone extinct, and because of that, no war should happen. So because of this, what they could do toward Rias was only one thing. Rias, go back to Japan. Instead of staying here, it is better for you to live there. Rias looked at her brother in disbelief. The meaning of Serzeka's words was simple. Instead of staying in the underworld and living uncomfortably in the underworld, she might as well have lived on earth with all humans. Yet, this also meant that he told her to leave the underworld since her existence caused them trouble. Serzek might be a loving big brother, but in the end, he was still Mal Lucifer. The interest of the devil needed to be handled first. Though his expression was uncomfortable and probably like what Riser thought if a chance appeared, Riser might be sent on a dangerous mission so he would die. By now, Riser's existence would be like Diarmuid, who was left wounded and died by his king, or Hataki Sakumo, 
who was being slandered as the source of failed mission and war. The two of them were just mere subordinates, and they didn't have the strength to fight the high above. Yet, the reality was like that. The weak had no rights, only the strong could live with dignity. Nevertheless, their biggest mistake was to overestimate Sekar Udi. Yet, they had to sigh since they were blamed, thinking that Issei Hayadu could create a miracle. However, when they thought with logic, wasn't it normal for Issei to lose to Riser? Issei might be the holder of boosted gear, but he was just a normal human without any redemption or talents. Meanwhile, Riser was a pure-blooded devil with the power of the Phoenix House. As for who was stronger, it was easy to tell, right? By now, Zioticus, Venelana, and Serzek had discussed the aftermath of this problem. As for Rius, she just stayed there without saying anything. She might be able to gain her freedom, and she didn't need to worry about her marriage or anything, but she lost many things, and by now, her willfulness probably wouldn't be heard by her family again. She was sad, yet there was nothing she could do. Bucho. Issei clenched his fist, thinking that if he wasn't so weak, then something like this wouldn't happen. The rest was the same since during the previous raiding game with Riser, they could hardly do anything. They were all weak. So, the only thing that they could do was just go back to Japan, leaving the underworld, so they wouldn't cause trouble again. Still, while the Grimry house was busy, Sona Citri was relatively calm since, unlike Rius, she didn't have an engagement with anyone. No, she had, but all of them had been rejected by her since all of those engagement candidates were unable to complete her request. Be smarter than her. This was her only requirement for her fiancé. Unfortunately, no one was able to do this. So, even if her father and mother wished her to have an engagement and search for a husband early, they could do nothing. Yet, Sona knew that as the next heir of the Citri house, similar to Rius, she was also unable to escape her fate to find a marriage partner. Still, she and her family were also unable to hide the surprise of what had happened during Rius's engagement with Riser. As Rius's friend, she was also invited, and she also saw what was happening. But I didn't expect that he would divorce Grimoy San. Yes, yes, but don't you think that he is quite cool? Well, if you say that. Sona looked at her peerage members, feeling speechless, but she understood their reaction. Moreover, it was normal for them to talk about what had happened during the engagement since it was the nature of a social animal to talk about others. You guys, be careful when talking about this. Don't let Rius or others hear it. She didn't stop them, but told them to be careful since the devil took up most importance on social standings. Even if they become her servants and devils, they are just low-class devils. Meanwhile, Rius was a high-class devil. Even if Rius's status had become shameful because of the previous matter, a face that fitted with her status as a high-class devil and an heir of the Grimry house still needed to be given. Yes, Kaicho. But Kaicho, what do you think of the young master of Phoenix? Shinra Sabaki, Sona's queen, couldn't help but ask. What do I think? Sona thought about the man. They happened to look at each other for a moment at the end. Frankly, my impression of him when I met him for the first time and at the end of the engagement was different. When she met him for the first time, she thought of him as a frivolous and bad boy. As an intelligent person, she hated this type of someone the most, yet strangely enough, she felt this man was suitable for Rius, who was thoughtless and moved based on her emotions. However, in the end, her impression of him changed. At least she didn't think that he was a bad person. Still, she shook her head. But I can hardly say anything about him since I don't know much about him except that he is a playboy. The fact that Riser was a playboy was something natural, especially when he always boasted about his harem previously. Yet, even so, he had become more mature somehow. This is how she felt. Well, how about we go back? After that engagement, they didn't immediately return to Japan since the accident during the engagement still shocked them. If possible, Sona wanted to return with Rius first since, like her peerage members, she was also curious about Riser and worried about Rius. Yet, suddenly, she received a call from her father. Her expression became dark before she let out a long sigh. Oda-sama, is there something? Oh, Sona, are you still in the underworld? I am about to go back to Japan. Then, go home first. What's wrong? Is there another engagement? I won't marry someone who can't beat me in a game of chess. The only reason why her father called her was only one, and that reason was to search for a marriage partner for her. Don't make such a judgment so easily. This one is different. I am sure that you will love him. I am the one who will decide that. Sona let out a helpless sigh as she rubbed her temple. Like Rius, Sona knew that she was unable to escape the fate of being engaged to another pure blood devil. Kaicho, 
What's wrong? All the members of Sona's peerage looked at her worriedly. Nothing. Sona shook her head. Sabaki, follow me back to my house, and you guys, return to Japan. Take care of school, okay? Yes, Kaicho. Leaving several reminders to all of them, Sona went home with her queen and was ready to face her new fiancé candidate. Chapter 17 A Reward for My Little Sister A Purple Sky Even if this sky felt unfamiliar, Riser strangely felt uncomfortable under this sky, yet once again, the landscape before him was peculiar. While he had seen this scenery before, he didn't dare to observe it carefully as he had just become Riser, and he had his family and his surroundings, so he had appeared nonchalant and even bored. Still, when he walked out with Ravel, he couldn't help but glance in a subtle manner, observing his surroundings. Unlike in his original world, the place where he lived was different. The color of the sky was one thing, but the architecture was also the same. Yet, he quickly calmed himself since he felt that it was normal. It was like how the houses in the West and the East were different due to the culture, so the houses in the underworld should be different, right? Frankly, the architecture in the domain of the Phoenix house wasn't much different from the Earth, and it was like those modern houses in Europe. Even so, this scene still marveled him since he had never lived in Europe. However, the request of his little sister in this world flabbergasted him. Going out. He was familiar with this term, and this was also the reason why Ravel brought him to play in their domain. Yet, why? Isn't there a hotel 300 meters away from your location? Tell Ravel that you are tired and take a break there. The security in that hotel is safe, and with your fire manipulation, no one will tell who you two are. So everything will be okay. What did you mean that everything would be okay? Also, what would he do when he brought Ravel to the hotel? Do you need me to explain? He decided to ignore the system. Frankly, as long as the system didn't give him options or punishment, such as losing some parts of his body, he could ignore it safely. Nevertheless, it was the first time he knew the system had a function to give him some information, such as there was a hotel 300 meters away from his location. Is there a place that you want to visit, Ravel? While he had various places that he wanted to visit, he decided to ask Ravel's opinion, considering it was her initiative to bring him out. Still, should he be grateful to her? After all, if she didn't say anything, he might stay holed up in his castle since there was so much information that he needed to understand. He couldn't be so thoughtless as Hayato Issei, who only thought of harem, breasts, and s asterisk x. After all, he didn't have a protagonist halo, and his power was limited. It was impossible to improve anymore, especially when the amount of his demonic power was impossible to improve unless the system gave him help, and everything was set at the moment he was born. Nevertheless, he was lucky that his demonic power had increased by nine times previously because of the system, but that was it and unless he got his hands on it. Eh. Well, my power should be enough to make me live comfortably. With his current power, as long as he didn't fight the last villain in this world, then he should be okay. Un. Hearing questions from her older brother, Ravel nodded. Oniai-sama, let's have fun today. Okay. Riser nodded. If it isn't fun, then I will complain, though. Ravel was speechless, then complained. Isn't setting up a date supposed to be the responsibility of the gentleman? So, is this a date? When he asked this question, Riser asked this question, yet his expression turned weird since Ravel was blushing and she was shy. What should he do? There is a hotel 300 meters away from your location. Ravel, how about we go now? Ye yes. Once again, Riser decided to ignore the system. Without planning, the two took a lazy stroll around the domain, walking, and trying something that interested them. Yet, he had to say, Ravel was a beautiful girl. Or rather, most devils were either handsome or beautiful. It was also the same case for him. The original riser might have been a scumbag, but he was handsome. Why hesitate? You are not the original riser, so everything is okay, right? Once again, the system tried to mess up his life. However, even he had to admit that the system was correct. He wasn't the original riser, but was it really okay? Oni-sama, let's go over there. Ravel showed a bright smile like a girl around her age pointing at her hand at the gelato store. Okay. The two walked together while looking at the various flavors of the gelato. Mint? Cherry blossoms? Rose? Durian? What is durian? Ravel was confused. The flower flavors aside, this natto flavor was so strange. It's the king of fruit in East Asia and the human world. It stinks though. It is delicious when you have gotten used to it. Frankly, he couldn't care whether a durian existed in the underworld or not since he couldn't help but glance at Ravel from time to time. Once again, 
Ravel was a beautiful girl, and her appearance was like those of a young lady from a wealthy family. Similar to him, she had blonde hair and dark blue eyes. Were they the traits of the Phoenix family? Nevertheless, she was cute. She tied her hair in twin tails with large, drill-like curls and blue ribbons, keeping them in place. Still, this girl was his little sister, so it was impossible for him to touch her. And instead of thinking about the system that tried to force him to mess with his little sister, he might as well enjoy this simple outing. Oniai-sama, I want to try the durian taste. Are you sure? His lips twitched. You said that it is delicious, right? Well, try it then. If you can't eat it, then I will eat it. Eh. What's wrong? He looked at Ravel in confusion since this girl suddenly blushed. No nothing. Ravel shook her head and wondered why she thought something like that. Yet probably everything was her older brother's fault since, from that day, it was hard for her to see him like before. Hearing the taste of gelato ordered by Ravel, the staff hesitated since she knew that Ravel was the daughter of Lord Phoenix. The situation of the underworld was like Europe, where nobles ruled their subjects. Lord Phoenix definitely wasn't a bad lord, but nevertheless, his subjects needed to treat him with the utmost respect, which was different from the Grimry House, which thought of their subjects as family and treated them with kindness. The staff knew the taste of the durian was like that, so she hesitated since the wrong choice might send her to death. It's okay. And can you also give me a vanilla taste? Ah, yes. Please wait for a while. When Riser talked, the staff was no longer able to say anything and followed the order. Watching this, Ravel waited for her gelato in excitement, but Riser thought that this world was good. If he was on the side of the subjects, then he might feel that it wasn't good, but he was on the side of the Lord, the ones that made the rules, so having been treated like a higher being, he felt awkward at first, he felt that it was pretty good. He knew that some people thought that it might be wrong since everyone required equality. However, this was an underworld. It was a place where the devils resided. This was different from the earth, where most humans were living. Moreover, unlike humans, the devils could be divided into powerful and weak devils. Could you treat a powerful devil in the same way as a weak devil? Then, what was the point of gaining power in the first place? Moreover, those who were strong naturally worked hard, and those who were weak were lazy. Could you treat the ones that work hard and the lazy the same way? While that might not be the case with everyone, in most cases, it is like that, right? In other words, if the devils wanted to be respected, they had to become strong. But if they were okay with the status quo, then they should know who they shouldn't offend and live a quiet and peaceful life on the corner. Nevertheless, Riser, who was born with a golden spoon, an affluent family, and a powerful talent, felt that his life as Riser wasn't bad at all. Viva feudalism. Ugh. Is it not good? Riser looked at Ravel, who tasted the durian ice cream for the first time and showed an ugly and disgusting expression. He couldn't help but laugh. Didn't I tell you before? Oniai-sama. Ravel pouted and hesitated, looking at her gelato. Still, she also felt annoyed since her brother was laughing at her misfortune. Take mine. I will eat yours. He rubbed Ravel's hair helplessly, took the durian gelato from Ravel, and gave her his vanilla gelato. Still, unlike her, who couldn't appreciate the taste of durian, he felt that this taste wasn't bad. However, when he ate the gelato, he didn't realize that Ravel was blushing as she stared at the wooden spoon she used to eat before being used to him. Then, she looked at the gelato in her hand. Similar to her gelato, his gelato was also eaten, and they didn't exchange their spoon. So if she ate it, then, then, they would exchange an indirect kiss. What's wrong? He looked at his little sister with doubt. No, nothing. She then quietly ate his gelato with a blush before the sweet taste of the vanilla spread onto her cute, pink tongue, feeling happy with her reward. Chapter 18 My Little Sister is Cute Riser and Ravel spent their entire day together, visiting various places, playing and enjoying their time, neither thought of other things except for each other's presence. Riser might not realize it, but because of his s asterisk x mastery, almost all of his actions, temperaments, and talks make Ravel unable to think of others other than her older brother. He often teased her, joked, and made her laugh making her show various emotions that she usually didn't show as she was a daughter of Lord Phoenix, so she needed to act like a lady. Though, maybe, because he was her older brother, she could act like she wanted to do without acting. Yet, at that time, he also observed the city where they lived and thought that this city was like a metropolis and it was full of everything. He was sure that that place would generate a large sum of tax, making the Phoenix house even richer. Nevertheless, he could tell that it was troublesome to manage this domain. 
Fortunately, he wasn't the heir. He was just the third son of his father. Moreover, his father was also the current master of the Phoenix House. When he thought about it, the life of Riser was perfect. The only unfortunate thing about him in the original was that his fiancée was taken by a paid dragon, Hayadu Issei. As for him, who had transmigrated into Riser, while he had to admit that Rius was beautiful, he didn't want a woman whose only advantage was only her breasts to become his wife. Moreover, he knew that this woman was a source of trouble, and if he married her, he might stay in Kuil, which was the center of disaster in this story. He, who had just become Riser, still wanted to enjoy his harem and lived in luxury by mooching his parents' money. He didn't want to fight and just wanted to enjoy life. As for the future of the underworld, devils, and the rest? It was better to leave all those problems to the main character since the role of the original Riser was nothing but just an antagonist in the beginning. Still, the thing that he worried about the most was the system. While the system gave him a good reward, the consequences were just so harsh that he might not be able to hold on. He let out a helpless sigh as he watched the scenery from the hill. It was almost night, and they thought of going back, but before they returned, Ravel told him that she wanted to visit the hill where she could overlook the entire city from a high position. He agreed, and the two quickly came without any trouble. In this domain, who dared to trouble them? With how the society of the world of devils worked, even if he went to a random house to hold someone's wife, he would be okay. Once again, being a riser was good. Still, before that. Thanks, Ravel. Ah. Ravel was surprised by her older brother's words. WH what's wrong so suddenly? Her face flushed red as if her secret had been found out. You asked me out because you were worried about me, right? Thank you, but I am okay. He gently patted her head and thought that she was a wonderful little sister, so in Riser's place, he was going to take care of her. There is a hotel 100 meters away from your location. Riser. While Riser was speechless, Ravel stared at her older brother with a blush. She knew that her older brother had changed. It was a change that she had never thought of, and this was why it made her curious and also worried at the same time. Unlike her first and second brothers, Riser was quite unreliable. Riser was, without a doubt, talented, but he acted like a bad boy, doing all the bad things, but no one said anything since he had the power to do so. Ravel was also happy to follow her older brother since he cared for her well, and she also won the raiding game with him, showing the prestige of the Phoenix house. Yet, everything changed after that engagement party. His demeanor, action, and power were so much different especially when he divorced Rius at that time. While Ravel didn't say anything, her blood was boiling in excitement. However, because of this, she thought that he was forcing himself. Even the blind people could tell whether it was the Grimory or Surzek who didn't want to marry him to Rius. So to protect the dignity of the Phoenix house, he decided to make a drastic move by divorcing Rius even though he wanted her. Frankly, this was the thought of everyone when they thought about his decision to divorce Rius. Though his decision was manly and handsome, Ravel was worried that he had buried all negative feelings in his heart, and it was the reason why she decided to invite him out, yet she didn't expect that he would notice it immediately. Oni-sama. Ravel smiled sweetly as she hugged his arm tightly and leaned against his shoulder. Riser didn't say anything, staring at the scenery of the town absent-mindedly, but he thought that Ravel's growth was rather good since her breasts were huge, even if her height wasn't that tall. Is it a D-cup? Or an E-cup? With his high intelligence, he used a complex mathematical formula to determine her size. There is a hotel 100 meters away from your location. Riser. Though Riser didn't know, Ravel was staring at him, thinking that he was so handsome, especially when he appeared to be in deep thought, if she knew what he was thinking. Nevertheless, similarly, her thoughts also returned to when she happened to see him together with all of his peerage members doing lewd and naughty. Even now, she could remember the euphoria on their faces, so she was curious. Was it felt really good? She looked at her older brother before she looked away with a blush. What am I thinking? However, Riser didn't realize that and only wondered what he should do now. The existence of the system might be strange, but he was okay with it since the system wasn't that troublesome except during the critical moment. However, he was too free. So free that he wasn't sure what he should do. Still, he thought that everything was so peaceful. How about I enjoy my harem again? When he went home, he was going to go all out with everyone, but eh. As a villain, how can you see your subjects live happily? Be evil and exploit them. Option 1. Kill your parents and become the head of the Phoenix domain. Then force your subjects to pay all of their incomes into tax. 
you will receive absolute ruler. Option 2. Force all of your subjects into the military and fight a war with the fallen angel, heavens, and all the Pathians in the world. You will receive absolute order. Option 3. Create a business and use the people in your domain. You will receive mathematic mastery. If you don't do it, you will lose your left nipple. Riser took back his previous words and thought that the system was simply too troublesome for him to handle. Chapter 19. My nipple is in danger. Riser was inside his study room while looking at various data on all the properties and businesses owned by his family, along with the map of the domain of the Phoenix family. By his side was Ravel and also his queen, Yubaluna. As for the others, they still needed to train with the three magics that he asked them to learn. After all, not everyone was born with a talent from the Phoenix family like Ravel or a talented magician like Yubaluna. Each of them had their own specialties and weaknesses, so they needed time. Nevertheless, the two weren't the only ones that mastered his three magics since there were also others, but he told them to help the rest, and he also didn't need to have a lot of people's help with his matter. No, it should be said even if he had them by his side, they wouldn't give him much help. Instead, they might cause him trouble since not everyone is smart. So, he only brought Ravel and Yubaluna with him to help him with his quest. Among the options that were given by his system, he chose the third option without hesitation. While the reward was rather strange, the option was much easier to complete than the others since he only needed to open one business and let the subjects that lived in his domain to work on his business. It was because of this he did research on what kind of businesses that his family had. After all, he didn't want one of his nipples to disappear. Oni Aisama, are you going to work at one of the companies like Raza Aniisama? Ravel asked. Raza Phoenix. It was the name of his second older brother, and unlike his oldest brother, Roval Phoenix, who was the heir of the Phoenix family, his second brother was the CEO of the media company owned by his family. Ravel thought that Riser was also going to work at one of the companies owned by their families. No, I want to start a business. Do you want to start a business, Oni Aisama, Riser Sama 2X? Not only Ravel but Yubaluna were also surprised. After all, they had never thought that Riser had an interest in the business. Frankly, their Phoenix house didn't need money. Or rather, the moment they were born from the Phoenix house, they were born rich. Their immortality trait, which was the symbolic power of the Phoenix house, gave them the ability to create Phoenix Tears, the special type of healing potion sought by everyone in the underworld and Earth. So, even if Riser didn't do anything, he wouldn't be troubled by money. Moreover, as the third son of the Phoenix Lord, he would be given a certain allowance that allowed him to have a luxurious life without any troubles. When he thought about this, he also didn't feel surprised that the original Riser was arrogant. After all, he had everything, and his opponent was only Hayudo Issei, an average pervert. The only best trait of Hayudo Issei was only boosted gear, but even so, it was like giving a pearl to swine. Moreover, if it wasn't for the power of the plot, protagonist, and a pay, Issei would have been just a weakling. When he became Riser and thought about the power and talent that resided in his body, he also didn't feel surprised why Riser was so arrogant, and it was normal for him to believe that he would be the victor. Yet, the power of a pay changed everything. It was too arrogant for him to fight against a pay. Nevertheless, he became Riser, and the power of the villain system should be more powerful than a pay, right? He wasn't sure, but he didn't really want to be involved with Issei any longer and only quietly lived in the underworld with his harem. However, to do that, he needed to complete his quest first and that was to do business. Still, when he looked at the number of businesses owned by Phoenix House, he sighed and thought, as expected of an old family. Even if the Phoenix family had the Phoenix tears, it didn't mean they stopped just like that. For every generation of the Phoenix family, there should be one or two that have a keen business talent. So by using the capital gained from the Phoenix tears, they created various businesses that spread over the underworld. It was like the media company where his second brother, Raza, worked as the CEO, and was also known as the biggest media company in the underworld. Frankly, as long as it was related to the life of the devils in the underworld, like water, energy, property, or even tissue, his family would be involved. However, as a devil, the most important thing wasn't money but power. Most of the devils in the Phoenix house weren't bad, but they couldn't be said to be the most powerful. If one of the mouse suddenly went rampage and became crazy, attacking the Phoenix domain, their family could do nothing and just die without any resistance. Even with the power of their immortality, it wouldn't help much. Still, 
While his power hadn't reached the level of Mao's, it should be enough to be comparable to the rank and second rank on the rating game. He knew that he had never fought them, but there were of their videos fighting, and according to his estimation, it wouldn't be a problem for him to defeat any of them. What kind of business do you plan to do, Oniyasama? Ravel was curious. It's not something perverted, right? Yubaluna closed her lips smartly as she looked at her master with a smile. Riser only stared at his queen with blank eyes, but he knew the conduct of the previous Riser wasn't good, so it was normal for his queen to think so. Or did she just wish to appear insolent, so he would punish her? Wait for tonight, woman. Yubella blushed, then poured a coffee into his empty cup while shaking her plump buttocks through her dress and slumped forward, showing off her alluring cleavage. Riser blinked his eyes while sitting on his chair calmly like a good boy as he smelled the scent of rose from her body. Ravel pouted, then coughed. Oniyasama, what kind of business do you want to do? I wonder. He rested both of his hands behind his head and thought for a moment. Frankly, being a riser was a little boring since this guy had everything. It was also why he wondered what kind of business he should do since the Phoenix family did all types of business. Still, he decided to go back to the basics. What were his specialties? His high intelligence? Should he make a new technology? No, it took too much of his time, and it was troublesome. He wanted to start a business where he didn't need to be troubled by it all the time. Moreover, it should be stable and it has long longevity. Then, the answer was obvious. Still, when he was about to write down his business proposal and be ready to start his business, the door of his study room was knocked on and then opened. Riser, are you here? Mother. He looked up and saw his beautiful mother. Is there something wrong? Hmm? Are you studying or something? His mother was surprised when she saw her naughty son was studying, so she forgot what she wanted to say. Yes, I plan to start a business. Huh? Business? Really? What kind? His mother was even more surprised. I will explain it to you later, but is there something that you want to tell me, mother? He was more cornered about what his mother planned to do when she suddenly came. Lord Citri has accepted your engagement with her daughter, Sona Citri. Let's meet your fiancé right away. Huh? Really? He was dumbfounded. Yes. His mother nodded with a sweet smile. This time, take care of her well, okay? Don't be like the previous one. Riser blinked his eyes and wasn't sure what to say at that moment. 2x. However, Riser wasn't the only one shocked. Ravel and Yubaluna were even more shocked. Chapter 20. New Fiancé. Citri House. It is one of the remaining 32 devil houses of the 72 pillars and one of the highest ranking, ranking in prince, and famous devil families. Riser didn't know much about this house since the original Riser was a scumbag and didn't study much. While he knew the general information, he didn't know much of the details. The first thing that he knew was that one of the Maus, the current Mao Leviathan, was born from this house. Secondly, the members of the Citri house have a strong affinity for water-based magic. Third and last, the Citri territory is known for its richness in nature and is said to boast most of the natural reserves present amongst the few territories belonging to high-class devils. It is also known to be one of the few territories which have advanced medical facilities as well, having one of the most famous hospitals in the underworld. Nevertheless, when he thought about it, the devil from the Citri house was a polarity of the Phoenix house. If the Citri house was known for water affinity, then the Phoenix house was known for fire affinity. The two of them were so much different. Yet, his engagement was accepted by Lord Citri. Riser just wanted to try his luck, but he didn't expect to be accepted immediately. It hasn't been a week, you know? Or rather, it had just been a few days after that day. While he was confused, his parents were talking to each other, happy with the growth of their son. What's wrong? Why do you seem so confused? No, but, isn't it weird? Why is my engagement settled so fast? He couldn't control it anymore and asked. As for now, he was on the magical flying train with his parents. They were on their way to Citri House territory, ready to start their engagement. It isn't weird. It's normal. Lord Phoenix shook his head. You were able to retain your dignity by divorcing your previous fiancé, and you are also powerful. With such a spec, who will reject you to become their son-in-law? Son-in-law. What a wonderful word, he thought. Still, when he thought about it, he felt that it was pretty normal for him to be accepted as a son-in-law. While the Grimry house tried to hide the news that had happened during the previous engagement, in the end, it was impossible, and it directly exploded, so what they could do was reduce the impact. Yet, how could they not be? The marriage between two pure-blooded high-class devils was politically correct, and something was favored by every pure-blood high-class devil, 
Yet because the Grimry house and Serzek Lucifer pampered Rias Grimry, she grew arrogant and thought that she could break away from this engagement, dreaming naively that she could get her prince in a romantic way with a reincarnated devil even worse. Moreover, her family supported her, letting her do her whim several times. Unfortunately, they didn't expect that Riser had enough and immediately divorced her. While his action might bring the Grimry house and Serzek Lucifer into an enemy, no one blamed him since the ones that were unreasonable were either Grimry House or Serzek Lucifer first. No one thought that he was the one that was blamed. The blame was on Grimry House and Serzek Lucifer. Nevertheless, Riser knew that it was also a political move made by another faction of the underworld since Grimry and Serzek Lucifer had grown so big. Not every devil loved the Grimry and Serzek after all, but they didn't have a chance to fight, so this incident gave them a chance to degenerate the two. Meanwhile, what Riser did was done to maintain the dignity of the Phoenix House. Still, because of this, he was speechless when he knew that he had become the number one trend in the underworld. Riser, the man. All of the devils agreed since he dared to divorce Rius, who was the little sister of Serzak Lucifer. He sighed helplessly, but there was nothing that he could do. Nevertheless, if this engagement was successful, then he could breathe in relief since if he could marry Sona Citri, her older sister, Mal Leviathan, Seraphal Leviathan could become his backing. By the way, I have heard from your mother that you want to start a business. What kind of business? Do you have enough money? Do you want me to give you some? Lord Phoenix asked several questions at the same time. Riser didn't feel surprised and understood why the original Riser could grow so arrogant at this moment, but probably because of his change that his parents became supportive toward him. It's okay. I should have enough money. When he checked his account, while he was speechless, he knew that he had enough money. So, what kind of business is it? It isn't something perverted, right? Riser wondered what kind of view his family had of him. He let out a helpless sigh and then said, Energy? Energy? 2x. His parents were dumbfounded. Yet, how could they not be? Their son told them that he was going to start an energy business. Still, they became curious. After all, Riser wasn't like the previous Riser, and he had grown up. They could see that. While Riser wasn't the original Riser, he still retained the memories of the previous Riser, along with habit and everything. The only difference was that his memory from his previous life was also added, combining the two. Yet, naturally, he was in the dominant position. Moreover, the time he transmigrated into Riser was during the engagement, and no one thought that he wasn't one. Or the system might be the one that did something. Nevertheless, he was a Riser now, so he didn't need to think about other matters. Are you going to enter something like gas, oil, or coal? No, I plan to enter renewable energy like the sun and geothermal energy. Why did you decide to enter that sector? It's because of my power. Your power. 2x. Riser nodded and explained that his master over fire manipulation could help him to search for the perfect spot for either sun or geothermal. Still, the sun's energy aside, since it was an underworld, the geothermal was reliable. The only problem was finding the spot where he should build the power plantation, and it was the most expensive thing. However, with his first reward, this wasn't a problem since he had tested it before, and he could tell where the location where he should build the power plantation without missing. As for the problem that might be received by this geothermal power plantation, if he didn't use his high intelligence, then wasn't it wasteful? Are you going to do this business in the human world? Eh? The human world? Are you not? When he thought about it, he wanted to slap his cheek since he realized that a devil and a human were different. Their world was different, and the source of energy used in the underworld was different from the earth. If the earth was using resources such as coal, oil, gas, and other things, then the underworld was using magic energy. As for which one was better, it was obvious, right? He only realized this, and it made him speechless, but he quickly nodded without changing his face. Yes, I plan to make it in the human world. That's a good idea. If you can make an energy company, then our influence in the human world will be even better. Then, during this trip, they started to talk about his plan to create this energy plantation in the human world. If you want to build it, then you will choose either Russia or the United States. Why those two countries? Riser felt weird. The influence of other myths, heavens, and fallen angels are minimal in the United States, and we govern California and New York. You can also go to Russia since we also govern St. Petersburg. Riser fell into a daze. Well, opening a business in the United States should be easier. However, Riser had to say he was surprised that his family governed those three cities in the human world. By the way, Riser, 
If you can feel the heat from the earth, then should it be possible for you to search for a hot spring? His mother suddenly asked curiously. Hot spring? He thought for a moment, then nodded. It should be possible. Then it's decided. Let's make a hot spring resort in our domain first. Riser wondered whether it was okay to decide something big so easily like this. But then their conversation stopped since they had arrived at the mansion where Lord Citri and Lady Citri lived. His parents didn't remind them what to do since they knew he had grown up. No one was wasting their time, and they were quickly greeted by Lord Citri. Lord Phoenix, welcome to our home. Thank you, Lord Citri. Everyone was happy. Only Riser felt a little awkward since he felt everything happened so fast but he greeted Lord Citri and Lady Citri politely while thinking they were beautiful. Riser, can I call you that? Yes, Lord Citri. Ha ha, you should call me father. Oh, right. Sona, come here. Let's meet your fiancé. When Lord Citri said so, a beautiful young woman stepped up. Riser then saw his new fiancé for the first time. 